Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 105, and we're part of the what we call the World Cup Recovery Group. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. And today is July 16, 2014. Via the magic of Skype, I'm actually talking to a person in Israel. Uh, this is David Pelegi. He's the uh, priest in charge, rector of Christ Church in Jerusalem, uh, the oldest church in Jerusalem, and he is the official tour guide for Anglican TV. Uh, we got to spend some time together in uh, the early part of this year, and uh, he took me and a group of uh, clergy around Israel and uh, uh, David and I've uh, certainly struck up a, a great friendship over time. Um, as many of you and the people who pay attention to the news know, uh, there's been conflict in Israel again. It's been going on for a long time, but uh, it's getting more egregious. And uh, I wanted to get uh, David's uh, opinion on this because here in the West, we have a press that wants to report a one sided story. And the one way to get over that is to get somebody who's on the ground in Israel and in Jerusalem. Um, you were in Jerusalem when this conflict started to hit its uh, um, rocket phase. Rockets were launched there and the Iron Dome was uh, enacted uh, about a week ago? Um, actually, the rockets were about a week ago and then on Thursday. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Thursday evening, the night my daughter was getting married. Uh, we had rockets uh, in Jerusalem, and we had some rockets in the Jerusalem area yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people like, well, this is the first time Jerusalem's been attacked. How does uh, a regular Jerusalem resident feel about this? Well, it depends on uh, where you live in Jerusalem. There are some people in Jerusalem, uh, in uh, East Jerusalem and Palestinians who are quite happy that uh, these things are happening or they uh, feel uh, that they're uh, getting, uh, that the Palestinians are finally giving, uh, getting even with Israel or giving to Israel what the, uh, the Palestinians have been receiving for some time. And then uh, there's folks who live in West Jerusalem who um, some are afraid uh, when these missiles come, but I think on the whole, um, most of us uh, in Jerusalem don't feel so uh, worried or afraid for ourselves. We're really just struck by how tragic this conflict is, and uh, we really worry about the people who live in Beersheba and uh, who live in Ashkelon and Ashdod who are under constant, constant missile attack. I think since the conflict has started, uh, almost 800 missiles, not more, have been uh, launched from Gaza. Uh, a lot of people say, well, why can't there be peace? And uh, over, you know, since the Jimmy Carter administration, there's been uh, work at peace uh, in the Middle East and before that as well. Um, I, the last heart attack um, had Israel and uh, the Palestinians come, Israel came 98% of the way to agree to uh, uh, Palestine's terms, why can't there be peace? My goodness. Um, this is a very, very complicated question. And uh, I think anything I say will probably get me into trouble. But uh, let me take a uh, honest stab at this. The, on one hand, you do have issues of land and uh, issues of sovereignty and you have a, there is an Israeli occupation uh, in the West Bank or part of the West Bank. And uh, th these are real issues that need dealing with. And unfortunately, because most of the press and the academic world is very secular, this is all they see. Mm -hmm. They see a conflict over land, a conflict over borders, maybe a conflict over uh, security security, water, etc. And again, I don't even, Kevin, I wouldn't uh, minimize that. But because of our, our secular worldview, we oftentimes miss the bigger picture. And I think the bigger 
the picture, and I've heard Michael uh, 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 Bishop Nazar Ali say this uh, at GAFCON, the bigger picture uh, of uh, the bigger context of this conflict is about uh, an Islamic self-understanding that will never ever, uh, on a permanent basis, allow an independent Jewish state to exist within the Islamic world. Just like it will not allow an independent Christian state, such as Lebanon, which is no longer a Christian state, uh, to also be in its midst, amidst. So I think there's a religious uh, something very deep, deeply religious. I think it's in the DNA of Islam. Uh, to them, or for them, uh, the existence of, a, of the state of Israel, uh, a state of the Jewish people, uh, a state. Of, of, of people who, who rejected uh, the revelation of Muhammad, who rejected the uh, Islam, they have no right uh, to have political independence and to rule over what was once Islamic lands or to rule over Muslims. It just is, it just doesn't work for Muslims. And the conflict will continue uh, even if there is an agreement, and I think there should be, uh, with the Palestinians. It's interesting because when you took me around Israel, we, we came upon many places where Muslims live and Jews live. In, 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 I'm not going to use the word harmony, but there's a, a, a large population of Muslims in Israel. There, uh, there certainly is. is uh, Eighteen percent of Israel's population is not Jewish, mm -hmm. and the vast majority of that eighteen percent, probably fourteen, fifteen percent. They're Muslims. Right. Uh, it's a it's it's a it's a conflict. On one hand, Israel's provided them uh, with a good living. Uh, it's provided them with education. It's provided them with jobs. It's providing them provided them uh, with uh, uh, you know state benefits uh, such as an excellent an system that actually works uh, and works uh, relatively well. And we all acknowledge here that things aren't perfect, and uh, there, is, there is prejudice in Israel and racism in Israel, and things could be better for them. But uh, for that Muslim minority that lives in Israel, um, they're living in a paradise compared to Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, uh, Iraq, uh, Algeria, uh, Libya. And so for Israelis, Arab citizens of Israel, there's a tension and a conflict. On one hand, this is not Islamic, this is not theologically correct, this is something's wrong with, with this picture. On the other hand, there, there are a heck of a lot of benefits, uh, and so this creates uh, a huge amount of uh, tension and dislocation for this uh, section of the population. Clearly, there will never be a full peace um, with the current leaders uh, of Hamas, uh, which you know wishes daily for the destruction of Israel. Um, the West always wants to get involved. Uh, Obama, mm -hmm. uh, UK, uh, Germany, France—they always have solutions for you. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a solution? Uh, I'm not sure there's a solution to this, uh, and I. I used to hear people talk like this, Kevin, uh, years and years ago. I used to hear somebody say, you know, the only solution is when Jesus comes back. Mm -hmm. And I used to think that's a really huge cop-out. And uh, people uh, are refusing to engage with the problem and the difficulties and to look for solutions. But I think the longer I'm here, I'm starting to... Uh, come close to adopting that uh, opinion. Um, I don't know if there's humanly, uh, a human solution to this, humanly speaking, without thinking in terms of the gospel, or thinking in terms of prayer, the best things that the politicians can do, uh, the international politicians, the international community, is to find ways to manage this problem and to try to ensure that as few people as possible lose their lives and uh, that uh, uh, all the states in our region have as much uh, security as possible. David, I want to thank you for your time. Um, now, 
When people visit uh, Christ Church, what part of Jerusalem are you located in? Uh, actually, we're located in East Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, we're in West Bank. We're a ministry to the Jewish people, but all our neighbors are Arab Christians and Muslims. So we have a, we actually have a ministry uh, to uh, Arabs and Jews, and uh, it's very challenging and uh, actually very exciting, especially in these days. Um, Kevin, I'd actually like to um, uh, address your. Uh, your viewers sure. and say that uh, if you do have a tour planned oh, yes. for September or <laughs> October or November, whether uh, with Shores Tours or uh, which is the study tour ministry of Christ Church or with somebody else, please don't run out and cancel. Um, I, we hope and pray that soon there will be some kind of ceasefire uh, because ultimately uh, Israel wants to end this conflict and actually so does Hamas. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bit of a tragedy because I don't think either side quite wanted it to spin out of control uh, like it has. But uh, if you are planning to come to Israel, please, 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 Israel, the Holy Land, uh, the Palestinian territories, whatever you want to call it, please don't cancel your tour, not, not yet at least, and uh, please plan on uh, uh, coming to see us, ho hopefully, uh, in the fall. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of the money that comes into Jerusalem and, and Israel is tourist dollars. Um, uh, you can't go down the street without seeing four or five huge buses going um, from one place to another. And that was in uh, January and February. I can't imagine what it's like in the summer there. Well, a, a lot of the Christian community, whether they're Messianic Jews mm -hmm. or Arab Christians, really depend on uh, tourism for their livelihood and, uh, and for their income. And so I just urge folks uh, not to cancel. The second thing I would suggest, uh, Kevin, is that people pray. And we're asking, at Christ Church, we're asking uh, all our prayer supporters and friends around the world to pray for a quick end to this conflict and, and to, uh, I know this sounds extreme, uh, but even to fast, uh, to, pr uh, to re remind the Lord that uh, you know, our region, we need peace. I've been telling people the best way, one of the best ways to pray is that they can download an app on their phone, and it's called Red Alert. And this uh, app actually tells you when there's uh, a, a missile attack in Israel and which town is uh, uh, being attacked. And... Uh, we ask folks that whenever they see this alert, they not only pray for the for the folks in that town, but they also pray for uh, the people in Gaza uh, at the same time. So it's just a good reminder throughout the day uh, that we constantly need to pray for this situation. So Red Alert Israel is the name of the app, and uh, it's worth downloading, especially if you're going to pray, even if your prayers are only uh, very short, the Lord certainly he, uh, knows our hearts, and uh, he will certainly answer those prayers if we unite together as a community. David, thank you so much for your ministry, your time, uh, your your life as a tour guide, uh, and I, I do hope uh, Anchor TV gets to get another tour quickly and soon. Uh, God bless. Thank you very much.